This is Full Contact Accounting, Episode 2, the QuickBooks Chart of Accounts. Hi, this is Mike from Full Contact Accounting. Welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to cover the chart of accounts in QuickBooks, which is probably the most important list that uh, that you'll get to work with. It's kind of the thing where uh, once you set it up at the beginning, you don't really have to think about it too much, but it's something that you're going to use every day. Every single transaction is going to use an item from the chart of accounts, so you really have to make sure you understand it. So you get there um, a couple of different ways. If you're using the home screen with the navigator here, there's an icon under the company section called chart of accounts. Or if you go to the lists menu, the very first item on there is chart of accounts. And on the icon bar, there's an icon here. It's abbreviated ACCNT, but if you hover over it, you'll see that it says chart of accounts. So I'm gonna click that just to get the window open here. And what you're going to see is a list of um, all the different accounts that exist in your company file. Now this is the, one of the QuickBooks sample companies. So um, you may or may not have all of these different accounts. Every company has a different chart of accounts. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you, uh, if you switch to QuickBooks after already having uh, some other kind of accounting system, maybe a manual system or you were on a one right system or peach tree or um, you know any kind of other system where you where you already had your own chart of accounts when you create your company file for the first time in QuickBooks you'll have the option to uh, to input all of the existing accounts you don't need to use one of their predefined ones so that you'll be able to carry on business using the exact same set of accounts that you had before if you're creating a new company in QuickBooks using the uh, Easy Step Interview, then it gives you some um, some sample charts of accounts predefined with different accounts based on what industry you say you're working in. For instance, if you say in the uh, Easy Step Interview that you're an advertising agency, it'll have accounts appropriate for that type of business versus if you say you are a, uh, a manufacturer. Uh, then it'll give you a different set of uh, accounts. But at any point in time, you can always um, create new accounts, delete or make inactive old accounts, rename, renumber. Um, you have a lot of flexibility. So first of all, what you'll notice here, this is, again, as I said, a sample company. So if we just look at the very first item here is the checking account. You'll notice there's three bank accounts and, and this entire list is sorted and grouped by type. And it mimics the, uh, the order that these items would appear in on a balance sheet for your business. So bank accounts are first, followed by accounts receivable, other current assets, fixed assets. And then now uh, we're down in the liability section now. There's accounts payable and credit cards payable, other current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and then the equity section. Now that's the end of the balance sheet accounts. Now we go into the uh, the P&L accounts, profit and loss. Uh, income accounts are first, and we have a number of those, followed by the cost of goods sold type of accounts, and then uh, just general expense accounts, operating expenses. And then down towards the bottom, we have other income and other expense accounts, and then there's some non-posting uh, items down here which we're not going to worry about right now. The first thing you'll notice is some of these accounts have a total that it shows here on the chart and some don't. Basically all of the balance sheet accounts will show you a, a, the current balance in that account. As soon as you get down to the the P&L section you'll notice there are no more balances and that's because you know, balance sheet accounts uh, generally have, they, they maintain a running balance, whereas profit and loss type accounts reset every year. Uh, at the end of your fiscal year, they zero out to start the next year. So it really wouldn't be practical to have a current balance in those accounts. 
Now you can reorder the list by clicking on any of the column headings. So if you wanted to sort by, you know, for some reason, if you wanted to sort by amount, you can do that. Type or name. Or this little diamond icon up here will resort it back to the uh, back to the default settings. And that's pretty much where I always leave it. Now let's uh, open up one of these accounts. Let's look at this checking account. I'm going to highlight the account and then down here at the bottom is this account button. And you'll notice this is consistent through all the QuickBooks lists, whether you're on the chart of accounts or the item list. Or let me just show you real quick the other lists. There's a fixed asset item list, a price level list, and a class list. They all work the same way as far as there's going to be a button down here in the lower left that is going to be where you do all your operations. Uh, you can either create a new one from here or edit, which is what we're going to do right now. I'm going to edit the checking account. It's going to open up the, uh, the setup screen for this bank account. So this is where you'll t tell it uh, which type of account it is. Um, account numbers, if that option is turned on. Uh, you don't have to use account numbers. You can if you want to. Um, then here's your account name. Uh, you can put in a description. Now this whole section down here is optional. You can see it, it, it's labeled as optional. So I usually don't bother filling in any more information than I really need. Um, the tax line mapping is something a lot of people get hung up on. And it's really only important if you use um, another Intuit product like uh, TurboTax or Pro Series or LaCert, which are more like professional tax pre preparation software. Um, so I usually don't even bother filling that out. This is a kind of a neat feature down here at the bottom. You can put in when to remind you to reorder checks so that you know when you get within 20 or so of the, the last number that you have, it'll pop up a reminder window that tells you you have to order checks. It's pretty cool. Um, this particular one is set up for online banking, which we're not going to get into right now, but just know that that's there and it's available. Uh, I'm going to cancel out of this now. Now if I look at a totally different type of account, like this building and improvements uh, fixed asset type of account, I'm going to again go down to my account button and go to edit. And you'll see it pretty much looks the same. It's a little different. It doesn't have the